Good morning. On behalf of Mr. Mellum, Mrs. Besslink, and Ms. Gallant, I wish to welcome you all to this year's virtual Remembrance Day ceremony here at Regiopolis Notre Dame Catholic High School. Throughout our history, the men and women who have worn the uniform have placed the security of Canada, as well as other countries, before their own safety. We will forever be grateful for their service and their sacrifice. Today, we remember those who have paid the ultimate price for our freedoms. Veterans want Canadians to understand the price of freedom. They are passing the torch to the people of Canada, so the memory of their sacrifices will continue and the values they fought for will live on in all of us. With this in mind, please stand for the national anthem and remain standing for our opening prayers. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On Remembrance Day, we pause to remember those who died in war and to pray for the victims of aggression and inhumanity throughout the world. This is also a day to pray for peace, to consider what we are doing as individuals, as a community, and as a nation to bring God's peace into the world. The response to our petitions will be, Lord, hear our prayer for peace. Lord, hear our prayer for peace. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military, and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer for peace. For peace in our world and unity within and among nations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for peace. For all those who have died while in service to our country, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for peace. For all members of our Canadian military who have been wounded, disabled, or traumatized by war, that they will receive support from their families, communities, and government. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for peace. For the Canadian Armed Forces and peacekeepers around the world, those who offer their lives in service to protect our freedoms, may they experience the peace of Christ in all that they do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for peace. For our families and friends who have served their country in the armed forces, and for all those currently serving in various posts around the world, may we remember them in our prayers today and acknowledge their sacrifices to our country, preserving and protecting our freedoms. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for peace. As we honor the past, may we put our faith in your future. For you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. We make these prayers for peace in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Every year, during the lead-up to Remembrance Day on November 11th, 
We honor those who have served Canada in times of war, military conflict, and peace. The theme for Veterans Week this year is service, courage, and sacrifice. At home, around the world, and across generations. Canadian military members have a long tradition of defense, of peace, and helping others. This year, we reflect on several milestones that illustrate this proud legacy of service. We remember Canadian soldiers who performed reconnaissance patrol in Afghanistan's Kandahar province, as this year marks the 10th anniversary of the end of Canada's combat mission in that country in 2011. We remember Canadian peacekeepers on patrol in Egypt's Sinai Peninsula, as this year marks the 65th anniversary of the beginning of the first large-scale United Nations peacekeeping mission there in 1956. We remember Canadian soldiers who carried sandbags to help fight rising floodwaters. Canadian Armed Forces members often help here at home, like 25 years ago during the devastating Saginaw floods in Quebec in 1996. We remember soldiers from Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry who helped wounded comrades get to an aid station near Capignon Valley as we mark the 70th anniversary of the Korean War's Battle of Capignon in 1951. And we remember Canadian aviators at an air base in Qatar during the Gulf War as we mark the 30th anniversary of the end of this tense conflict in the Persian Gulf region in 1991. We remember Canadian signalers who used a spotting scope in the hills of Hong Kong as we mark the 80th anniversary of the Second World War's defense of Hong Kong in 1941. And we remember Canadian soldiers training near the Somme Valley in France during the First World War as this marks the 105th anniversary of the Battles of the Somme and Beaumont Hamel in 1916. We all benefit from the incredible service and sacrifice of more than 2.3 million Canadians who have proudly served our country in uniform for more than 100 years. It is our duty to honor and to remember them. Hailing from coast to coast to coast, they proudly served our country at home and abroad, helping maintain peace and freedom and allowing us to lead the lives we do today. Let us reflect on the extraordinary sacrifice of Canada's veterans at home, around the world, and through the generations as we watch this video commemorating their service and listen to the R&D band perform Sleep.
Today, many Canadian Forces members are involved in various missions throughout the world. Canadians proudly recognize the many contributions, often unspoken, made by our servicemen and women and their families. They are our grandfathers, brothers, mothers and sisters, neighbors and friends, Canada's veterans. Their courage, service and sacrifices have kept us strong, proud and free. This year, Canadian veterans have challenged us to take time to remember. As you watch this video prepared by members of Canada's Armed Forces, take time to reflect on how you could help to preserve our veterans' legacies. It's 1916. 800 young Newfoundlanders head towards the front line. They fight bravely through barbed wires and a firestorm. The next morning, only 68 answer the roll call. A community loses a generation. That same year, hundreds of black Canadians come together as members of the number two construction battalion. Many have been denied the opportunity to fight for their country because of the color of their skin, but they refuse to take no for an answer. Even then, they are only allowed to be part of a segregated, non-combatant unit. After the war is done, they do not receive the full recognition they deserve until a century later. A country is denied its heroes. It's 1951 in the heat of the Korean War. Canadian forces are under attack. Noel Knockwood, a residential school survivor from the Sabaganagadi First Nation, fires his 105mm howitzer against the enemy. He's only 18 years old and he serves in Korea for 413 days. He comes home and begins his lifelong work to promote and protect Mi'kmaq heritage and spirituality. A community gains a pillar. It's 1956 and conflict has escalated between Egypt, France, the United Kingdom and Israel over the Suez Canal. With the region in crisis, the United Nations calls for a ceasefire and withdrawal of foreign forces. They create the first United Nations Emergency Force. It is led by a Canadian peacekeeper named Tommy Burns. A country gains a new part of its identity. Our history is not just dates and key battles. It is not just victories and defeats. Our history is people. It is their duty, honor, integrity, and courage. It is the people who came home forever changed by the grim realities of war. It is the ones who made the ultimate sacrifice in the pursuit of a better world. A world where everyone can be free. A world that follows the rule of law and upholds human rights. A world where all people are treated with dignity and respect. This Veterans Week, we remember the sailors patrolling the perilous seas, navigating bravely despite the danger of hidden German U-boats. We remember the soldiers crawling through the mud, bracing enemy fire. We remember the aviators flying out into the night, dodging enemy spotters and hoping that their planes would make it through. We remember the nurses saving lives while putting their own on the line. We remember the people on the home front making munitions and ensuring that our forces overseas had the supplies they needed to stay alive. And we remember that conflict did not end with the First and Second World Wars. Over the decades, Canada's military members have continued to answer the call to save lives, protect peace and uphold security and stability in the world. Most recently, over 40,000 Canadian Armed Forces members served in Afghanistan between 2001 and 2014, risking their lives to help people in need. Although our military is not involved in any combat missions today, we proudly remember the contributions of those who made the ultimate sacrifice. When I hear veteran stories, I am inspired to be a better Canadian, a better person. I want to live up to their example. I am inspired by people like Major Lynn Doucette, an air weapons controller. She was deployed to the Persian Gulf in 1991 and worked in an American air base in Turkey. There, she commanded a U.S. Airborne Warning and Control System aircraft. She kept a careful eye on the enemy and reported what she saw on the radar to the generals on the ground. She recommended what actions they should take, but she faced significant barriers as a woman in uniform. Local cultural restrictions at the Turkish air base banned women from entering the operation centers. She was denied her seat at the table due to her gender, but she was undeterred and performed her duties with excellence and bravery. Her work and that of her comrades in arms was key to maintaining control over the sky during the Persian Gulf War. Today, Canadian Armed Forces members work at sea, on the ground, and in the air to protect and defend our country, and to support our allies across the globe. There are missions in Europe, the Middle East, and the Asia Pacific, 
and it's all about making the world safer. As Canadians, we can take a lot of pride in being a reliable friend and in working together, especially with our NATO allies. We also help make the sea safer by stopping traffickers. Earlier this year, a Canadian ship broke records when it seized 2,835 pounds of heroin off the coast of Oman. Those drugs would have hurt people, and the money made from selling them would have gone to criminal groups. The Navy has done a lot of really great work in the Middle East, as well as in the Caribbean and Eastern Pacific Ocean, to stop these smugglers. And Canada helps make sure that the ocean is safe for ships to travel. When so many of the things we love travel by boat, that's a really important responsibility. In countries like Ukraine, Iraq, and Lebanon, Canada supports local security forces. We help them develop the skills they need to build and maintain long-term peace and stability. Canadians are also supporting United Nations peacekeeping operations. That includes flying people, equipment, and supplies where they are needed for UN operations in Africa. Here at home, you may have seen military members right in your community. They are there helping out with floods, fires, ice storms, and COVID-19. No matter what happens, their job is to work hard to keep you and your community safe. Maybe you've seen helicopters or planes flying overhead, or you've walked past the massive steel hull ship docked at the ports, or the highway. You've passed by some big green trucks driving all together. Maybe you have someone in your family who is in the military, or your neighbor is a veteran. We all have different connections to Veterans Week, and we have different ways of showing our gratitude. A wreath laying ceremony, reciting a poem, wearing a poppy, listening to a podcast, calling up a relative, and asking to hear their stories. I want to thank you for taking the time to be part of this Veterans Week event. Thank you for remembering their stories and their sacrifices. Together, we celebrate the lives of those who made it home, who survived to have families and to grow old and we honor those who did not. We remember the thousands of people, past and present, who put their lives on the line in defense of our country, our people, and our values, lest we forget. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God of love and peace, today we honor our veterans worthy men and women who gave their best when they were called upon to serve and protect their country and also stood in the breach with their neighbors in foreign lands. You taught us that no one has more love than to lay down one's life for a friend. Many of these brave soldiers made the ultimate sacrifice for the sake of others whom they had never known Lord, we pray that you will bless these brave ones, living and dead, for their unselfish service. Bless them abundantly for the hardships they faced, for the sacrifices they made. We respect them. We thank them. We honor them. We are proud of them. And we pray that you will watch over and heal those wounded physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Grant them the support of those they sought to protect. Bless these special people with peace and new happiness. Unite us for whom they spent their lives. May they inspire us to generous service and to work for peace among all people. Almighty God, we ask this of you through Jesus Christ, your son, who laid down his life for us all. May our God of peace bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much for taking part in our virtual commemoration of Remembrance Day. Your presence and attention have certainly given a strong response to our veterans' challenge of remembrance.